Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. Adobe has released a new update for After Effects CC called 2015.3 and it has introduced several features which I think are awesome, three of which are more of the back-end GPU uh, sort of upgrades which is always good, uh, two of which over here which are the character animator uh, features which um, I will be definitely be doing a video for character animator coming up in the near future which because I think the software is looking pretty awesome actually. Um, and in this video, we'll be looking at two features called, uh, I think, Lumetri Color, if I said that correctly. I'm not 100% sure, Lumetri Color. And we'll be looking at the uh, Cinema 4D integration with After Effects, which uh, they're just continuing to prove on that. So that's always awesome. But let's go ahead and dive into this and see what, uh, how we can use these uh, features to make our projects even better. So, so the first feature we're going to be looking at is the integration between After Effects and Cinema 4D. Uh, so basically, you can... Uh, create your shape layers and text in After Effects and then send it over to Cinema 4D to extrude and you know do other sorts of animation and effects to it which is really awesome in the past you could only go from Cinema 4D to After Effects but now you can kind of go from After Effects to Cinema 4D so basically you create uh, whatever you want in After Effects and then you can send it over to Cinema 4D for uh, uh, basically extruding or whatever you want to do so how do you do that um, basically just you know, with your shape layers and your text, uh, make sure you select these as uh, 3D layers. And then you go up to File, Export, Maxon Cinema 4D Exporter. And then it'll, this will come up. It'll ask you uh, for two options here if you want to shoot text as shapes or preserve editable text. Um, I've learned that if you click extrude text as shapes with highest fidelity export, um, basically um, you will have all the full parameters. Uh, that you can in Cinema 4D. So um, as long as you have your final text, you should be good. Um, and then you click OK. And then it'll ask you to save it. Uh, we'll call this uh, Text Hut. And we'll click Save. And that will take a second. And then uh, what we can do here is pre-compose uh, this composition. And uh, we can call it uh, C4D Text. And click OK. And then uh, we'll go ahead and go to where we exported our Cinema 4D layer and we can import it into After Effects and then make sure the uh, composition is selected in the timeline and hold down Alt and drag down your new uh, Cinema 4D export file and it will replace the file right here in the comp. So now we have this in the comp and uh, what we could do is go to project and um, where we have our Cinema 4D uh, layer we need to hit Command E and we will be able to edit this in Cinema 4D. And we can open this up. And as you see, we have extrude files for all of the text uh, layers, which is kind of cool. So I'll select all of the extrude layers. And we can you know, change the uh, extrusion on this. So it could be, make it a little bit bigger. Um, we can add effects to this thing. Um, basically, I can go maybe add a bend or something, put it underneath here. And we can change the strength of this. And we can animate things, but this tutorial isn't on how to use Cinema 4D. So when we're done with applying our effects and stuff, we just have to save this project. And then we go back to After Effects, and it'll update automatically in After Effects. And of course, we have all the information, like the cam where the camera position was in Cinema 4D, um, and all this wireframe stuff, which uh, can be annoying. but it can be beneficial if you use it in After Effects. But to get rid of that, basically, we go to Renderer and we click on Standard Final. And that will take out all the wireframes here. And then um, let's go ahead and go up to Layer New Camera and click OK. And then go back to our Cinema 4D file here. And then under Project Settings, under Camera, uh, where it says Cinema 4D Camera, go click on Comp Camera. And now we will go straight to our After Effects uh, camera. And for some reason, I don't really know why the text is going to be up here. I'm not sure if that's on me. But uh, to quickly fix that, we'll go to our camera tools up here. Click on the track XY tool. And we can just drag it down. Man, it takes a few seconds. But I, I really don't know why it's like that. It might be a bug or it really could just be me. So uh, if anybody uh, out there has an idea what's happening with that, just let me know. Probably just After Effects. Um, and now we can go here and we can animate this thing. So that's how that integration works between um, After Effects and Cinema 4D. It's really awesome. So the other new feature I want to take a look at is Lumetri Color. 
And I recently did a top 10 effects video in After Effects, strictly my opinion, of course. Uh, but right now I'm kind of upset that I made that a little bit too early because um, I would have definitely put this effect in my top three because this thing is awesome. I do a lot of DaVinci Resolve tutorials and this basically has all the parameters that I use in Resolve. So basically After Effects just made my life a lot more interesting. So um, basically you can enable HDR mode. So let me actually uh, start from scratch here. So we go to Effect Color Correction, Lumetri Color. And let's open up Basic Color Correction. And uh, as you can see, we can import some LUTs, which is just awesome. Of course, you know, it, it seems like uh, After Effects is uh, just fanboying airy cameras, which is okay. Um, but of course, you can import your own LUTs, which is just cool. Um, and you have some basic controls here to uh, change the color temperature, exposure, contrast. Um, and of course, you can mess with the highlights, which is really awesome. And this really is not a color correction tutorial, but I'm going to quickly go through some of these features because um, I think they're amazing. And then um, the creative mode uh, is actually really interesting. They have some preset looks for you. Um, so let's go ahead and click on one. I don't really know what it's going to do. So eh, it's not the greatest look ever, um, but it has some little interesting features like faded film. Um, I th found that really cool. Um, and you can increase the sharpen. Um, and of course, there's a ton of other controls underneath here, and I will definitely be making a video on just using this effect because this effect is massive, and there's so much you can do with this effect. It's basically, in my opinion right now, the only color correction tool you actually need. This has everything in it. Um, so let's say you want to use the HDR mode. So let's go over that real fast. So let's go and um, let's go to effect, color correction, and let's add it again, Lumetri color. And this time, let's enable high dynamic range. And as you can see, I'll start the creative mode goes away. Um, and the one thing you have to do is make sure that your color space or your sorry, your bit depth is set to uh, 32 bits per channel. And uh, usually, and it's always set to 8 bits per channel. So make sure it's set it to 32 bits per channel and click OK. And then the effect will work. Um, and we lose our creative settings and we lose our ability to import LUTs. But, at the end of the day, I absolutely love this effect and I will definitely be making a video on how to use this further. So guys, if you have any questions or requests for tutorials, please let me know below or hit me up on my social media networks, links in the description. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing for more awesome tutorials just like this. And guys, thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you soon.